going out somewhere after with Martin. Right, it's gone three o'clock and we have the record button underway. This is a, an extraordinary council meeting uh, held at Council Chambers, 5th of October 2022. Uh, as I said, the meeting is being recorded and will be posted to the council website. Uh, and it's a late addition to the um, agenda. Uh, it's valedictories round two, but I'll be departing well before that agenda item. <laughs> Uh, look, if anyone, everybody could stand, please, and I'm going to hand over to the other sports parts up. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa, e te atua tō mātou kaihan, ka te aho te maramata into the application. Ka tīmata au mahi, ka mau te tika me te aroha, me tia ku kia u utono e mātou. Tau aroha a roto e tēne hui huinga, whakaki a mātou whakare a mātou mahi katoa i. So basically... God, our Creator, when you speak there is light and life, when you act there is justice and love. Grant that your love may be present in our meeting, so that what we say and what we do may be filled with your Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, thank you, Councillor Taylor. Uh, moving on to apologies. We have apologies uh, recorded from Councillor Brooks and Councillor Hope. Is there any other apologies to be noted? Uh, I'll move. Second, Councillor Arbuckle. Thank you. All those in favour? Karen. Uh, agenda item three, declarations of interest. We're aware of our responsibilities in that regard. Uh, turning to page two, uh, and agenda item four is the better off funding. And I'm going to hand over to Mark Wheeler, our Chief Executive, uh, to summarise, and then Martin will uh, provide an explanation around some of the items. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, firstly, what, you, what we're not asking you to do today is make judgments on th the three waters reforms, but you may choose to sit, make some comments on that. This is actually about the three waters funding that's being offered by government. It's, then we've looked to a lower the line. This council has worked through uh, with those projects over some months and we've been working with EWI on them. Uh, it would be good if we could get that um, through in this term uh, and you're familiar with them. So that's the purpose of today. Uh, and we're, we're seeking a delegation, assuming you, you approve of the projects, we're uh, seeking a delegation to the mayor and the chief executive, which could of course be the new mayor if um, the final decisions aren't made until um, the next council too. Uh, so, um, I'll just, um, you'll recall, we get 23 million in total, 23.04 million with 5.76 available from tranche one, which we can apply for now, and the balance from tranche two. Um, we have been working through these over some months. Uh, Hara has been working with Iwi on uh, the projects that are particular to them, but also the overall list to make sure that they're comfortable. So far, they are comfortable, and we're just trying to get a uh, final sign-off from them. So I'll now hand over to Martin, and he can run through the, the projects list. I wasn't actually intending to run through every individual project, but just to highlight the two, the differences, and while we've got a tranche one proposal is in the first five, and they're the ones that Council agreed to as part of the annual planning process, and what we have here is actually the five, year, the five, the potential five-year impact if the project actually goes that long. Some of the money go for three years, and some some go right for the full five-year period. Um, so, so I think we've already looked at those things um, pretty closely. Um, moving moving further down into item into number six, that this really is looking at. It sounds long-term recovery plan. I think that's fairly self-explanatory. Um, there's a lot of work to do, and this is the first step in that process. Solar panels library building. I think we've got a good opportunity there to actually take an environmental step in the right direction. Plus, we also anticipate that it will actually save operating costs in the longer term as well. Upgrading of lights in Lansdowne Park. Um, it replaces, I think it's 168 lights and it will provide a better, better, better quality of uh, lighting there and also should save, should save operating costs again for, for Lansdowne Park. The, is this, I mean, um, 
perhaps instead of going through all 19 of these, I'm just wondering, councillors, whether or not it might be better just to say this, if there's any ones of clarification that you might want. Um, and um, I'm sort of conscious that um, you know, we've had, I've had one, one question on um, the bottom one on page, um, on page three there about the Heritage Centre investigation. And that was really, that was the investigation that was um, for the setting up of the Heritage Centre that was proposed by Rangatani as part of the annual plan submission. Um, Martin, I think it's, it would be very a very good idea to highlight, uh, particularly uh, paragraph two. I mean, there is a uh, some requirements around this funding. It's not just any project that we have may have within the district. I mean, there are some criteria that are set here. So you're, you're talking about actually highlighting how we meet the criteria on the project. Well, if there's any questions, it's a matter of fitting the uh, proposals in with the criteria that's already been set. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, certainly it's... Um, yeah, it's every... What we've done is we've been working through with um, Kanoa, who's the guardian of, of, the, of these funding and the, all the interactions that we've had to date so far have been that every proposal we've put forward meets the criteria that's contained in paragraph three from government. Also, um, there was also criteria that was proposed by council as well, which was the benefit to the whole district and there's it basically, it's the impact on financial costs and or offset by benefits, and we talked about that potentially on the, the library project and the putting of solar panels on that, where basically there is a cost there, but we believe the benefits will actually outweigh that and put council in a better environmental position as well. Um, in the level of EWI support, um, we have met with every EWI and as, as part of the preliminary development of this list, and they've each and none of them have come back and indicated that they don't support the projects here. What we're trying to do is gauge a level of support comparative to other potential projects so you can see whether or not that project moves up and down the priority, the priority list that we've got there. Um, so is that the kind of thing you're wanting, Mr Mayor? Just to... Yeah, just to be really clear, they're not just projects we've plucked out of uh, out of our, uh, you know, wish list, if you like, uh, they are specifically within that criteria that's been set by DIA. Yeah. Can I add um, that we, you'll see on the table, we have scored them against the criteria Martin talked about, and that's a staff assessment of the different uh, weightings on those three points. So the 5.76 uh, are our top scorers. Yes. We've done the best we can, put it that way. That's right. And if, for example, the um, Kanoa, for whatever reason, decides not to approve one of those projects, then the line basically comes down. So if they decide to only approve on page four, um, 105,000 for tracks and pathways, currently it's 150, then that would free up 45,000. And then we'd look to move the upgrade lights LED of other sports parks up into the application. So basically, this, what this list does is put out a priority, and if one gets taken out, it's in the within the 5.76, then we'd look to lower the line down to further pick up those things so that we do use the full 5.76 million. Um, because while government has, government has said that any unspent money from tranche one um, will be carried through to tranche two. Um, it relies on the actual establishment of the entities for tranche two money to be available because the funding, the source of funding, the other um, two billion. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. And I think that last bit of dollars of debt being added to each of those entities' balance sheets. And it's that debt that's funding tranche two. So if the entities don't proceed or don't get established, then there's no money. Yeah, so to put that another way, Labor's got to get across the line next general election. If we listen to the other parties and their intention around three waters. Councillor Peters. Yeah. Thanks, Mr Mayor. And I think that last bit of the discussion sort of 
I partially answered my question, but I guess my question is that the list of um, projects under a combined score, is that an absolute priority list from one through to 16? Or is there some subjectivist in that? For example, when we get down towards the bottom, there's a few scores very similar. And, and if the way I, my question is that the list of all those ones are actually um, taken up. Uh, then we get all the way down to Technology Innovation Hub before we get into a short form. Um, but then I'm conscious, for example, that the Technology Innovation Hub hasn't yet been approved by council as a project. So, so how do we deal with projects that haven't yet been approved? Do we just go down them one by one or council goes down them one by one? Well, they, this is to get funding for those projects. So um, it's free. So. Um, there would be no cost for that project, but there'd be an ongoing cost. So council could still decide not to proceed, but then we'd have then we would be under You'd move down to the next one. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Right, councillors that have got aspirations to come back, I want to hear from you. <laughs> Councillor Taylor. Well, that wasn't the reason you're hearing from me. I had my hand up anyway. Um, I, my, my question, and I absolutely don't disagree with the merits, of it, and it is important for the community, but the acceleration of the reserve management plan review, I would have thought it would have fallen short of the criteria as I read it. And I also thought that we had an indication that just moving projects forward wasn't necessarily within the criteria if it was already budgeted. And certainly our reserve management plan reviews. Some subjectivists in that, for example. Plan. So could you just talk through the criteria, please? If it's accelerated, it can meet the criteria. Um, so, but if it's just undertaking something for free that's already in the LTP, then they get down towards the bottom. There's a few in your annual in your annual plan, basically. So, it's if you bring your yes, Mark said it's bring it forward from year two or three to year one, then that's that's okay. And, and supplementary to that, because it's I think it's a project that we haven't seen across our table before. In any detail, is this to bring in contractors to complete those plans because we're already struggling with capacity and reserves department uh, with the current plans that they're working on? Y yes, it is. Uh, and I, I can refer to. Oh. Application. But, but Jamie's, yes. in, Jamie's in the background there, so he might want to. Um, answer for definite. Um, sorry. Uh, in response to the council's question, yes, we do not have the resources in house. Um, we are looking at uh, contracting. Um, for example, the Wither Hills Farm Park is management plans fifteen years old. Um, we've just negotiated with a contractor to review that. Now, uh, and it was my request to push these in, into this better funding um, opportunity because at present without those plans being current and up to date it stagnates a lot of opportunities and and a good example is the um, mountain bike opportunity that's been that they came and promoted that to council wanting to establish a bike track in the walking area of Wither Hills Park. The current management plan doesn't allow for that to happen. And, and that's one of the issues that needs to be considered. We've also got a, a health and safety issue with fire and, um, and it's very important to keep these things up to date. What happens once they get developed, they generate a lot of potential opportunities for work. And that is why it's very important to keep them current. Um, we do. We are not staffed to uh, develop these things in house ourselves at the present point of time. Um, on, at the moment, you're aware we've got the Waikato Bay Reserve Plan, um, which has just been put on hold. Uh, we recently completed completed the Victoria Domain Management Plan, and I think those that were on that committee saw you know the the breadth of what's included in them and the opportunities that arise after they've been developed. So that's why this has been put forward. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That answers it, and it's good to get that clarity. How, how it will add to the community in those reserves. Councillor Forbes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just wanted clarity around the river flood protection and climate change enhancement. It seems, uh, given the the fact that we've had now two years in a row 
with significant events. Uh, 350,000 seems to be slightly light. Is that, and it, is it across the whole of the so, Can you clarify that? So, can you clarify what you'd expect to happen without doing the review first? Yeah, so my, my query is, is that across the whole of the district or is it more specifically towards the Wairau River? Basically, this was one of the annual plan projects that was approved. And in actuality, it, the cost of that is five-year cost and it, it involves the, the employment of an admin support person for the rivers team. So then that she can free them up to actually undertake further work on the on this on this particular area, but it's it's that, that's all it is. That's great. That's the clarity that I just wanted. Thank you, Councillor Crow. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. I, I don't have a lot to say other than um, I'm I'm pretty good with the list. I'm slightly concerned about uh, I suppose confidence around the funding, but but uh, you have reasonable confidence given your liaison with um, your, your identified delegate that um, that uh, everything that's there is good. So, in the event that something got taken off and we ended up short, do we get to renegotiate to get back up to that level? Well, that, that's fit what I'm saying. So, if, for example, um, they took off items that, that equaled $760,000, then the two items marked in red on page four would move up into the 5.76 application. Just a supplementary, if it was greater than that, that's my point. So, so if they took off, you know, five or six projects that were a million dollars, and then we come up several hundred thousand dollars short because the list doesn't go further. Then we'd look to identify projects that would fill that, that would fill that list, um, because we do have an extension of time from the application of this. So um, that was as a result of the flood event. So we've been extended to 30 November, I think, Mark, isn't it? Yeah. So we'd hope to hear the outcome of this round. And we so said we've had um, no pushbacks on what projects being put there. So we've got reasonably confident things will go ahead. But if they do do that, then it still gives us time to potentially develop another project to fill that 5.76, and that would be our aim. I guess that's why we've tried really hard to make sure they will qualify just in case we do miss out and we can substitute something. So, yeah, I guess there's no guarantees, but we're quite confident we can substitute at this stage. Anyway. Councillor Simon. I agree with the proposed projects. I think they're brilliant. But my only question is, if we accept this money, and I know we've been here before, is are we saying that we accept three waters? No, you're not. You're just saying that, thank you very much, government, you're giving us money. Um, and we've said all along uh, that uh, we don't support three waters, and that still stands. Nothing changes. Thank you. Councillor Dawson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So the, my only thought really is along the lines of what Councillor Peters talked about and, and the ongoing commitments that we set ourselves up for. So when this money runs out in terms of things like around capacity building or the technology. But aspirations to come back on effectively committing uh, future councils to either have the pain of unwinding these things or to have the costs of um, continuing these things. So. No doubt there'll be a separate paper for these things in terms of any future obligations that we'll be entering into and having to fund. So no doubt that will work through the system in due course. I understand the staging of this and the timing of this, that we're going to get this money and then to understand the, the longer term implications. So that's fine. Thank you. Thank you. I Cap suppose the capacity building is um, for five years. Five years is budgeted there, so it'd be at the end of that period that council would have to make a decision: does it carry on with it or not? With Ewe, of course. Uh, whereas the uh, hub is a, a capital investment, and yes, that would you know there would be ongoing operational cost issues. So, if council wishes, we could uh, before we uh, go ahead with uh, drawing down that money, we could um, council could consider whether it accepts the ongoing uh, funding of that, uh, operational funding of that facility or not. 
That's a good point, though, but sooner or later you've got to put the toe in the water, I suppose. Councillor Armacle. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I might just take a little bit of time. Um, Councillor Soman um, did raise one of the issues I'm concerned on, and as much as this council's had legal advice saying that if we receive this money, we're not in the boat, that we're not taking our three quarters uh, infrastructure. To me, it's just another step down the road. So to me, that's um, not something that I'm particularly pleased about. Um, what I would say is I'm actually surprised that we're sitting here today. I am surprised that we are sitting here today to vote on this. Um, when I got this last Friday, and I understand that there has been work by council officers. Of the reserve management plan review. This proposal, but um, we do have to the 30th of November, and we do have in a couple of days time into council, and we have at least eight plus new councillors. There's many things on this list. As long as I've sat here, I've sat here for longer than most people around this table. Most of these things I know something about. Some of them I know nothing about. Um, these are some things that should be workshopped. Uh, it should be actually a bit more time taken on some of this. My preference is for this paper to lay on the table for the new council. Um, thank the council officers for the work that has been put in. The first question one needs to ask yourself, are these things a priority? Are they a thing that must be decided today? And the answer to that is no, because the majority of these things don't sit in the LTP, as we know, they're things outside of the long-term plan. Uh, yes, we've got some commitments there from the annual plan. The rest of those things, there's a lot of wish list stuff on there. Um, some of it, I don't 100% uh, think they are great projects. I don't know what projects have not made that, the number score. I haven't been a part of, I've been a part of one of these uh, proposals. Uh, I, I'd suggest this lies on the table for the new council. Uh, I don't see the urgency. I'll just comment on one of those projects, which if you did decide that it should lay on the council table, that's fine. Um, the Marlborough Sounds long-term recovery plan, I think probably there, there, there might be uh, acceptance of that as an important project. It'd be good to get that one in. And so we know we've at least got funding for that, that work that we've already committed to. So, uh, but yeah, that's a, that's a point of view. Can you perhaps identify which projects that you haven't had any information about or don't know anything about? Uh, we could go down the list. Um, I know something about the solar panels. Uh, upgrade of lights at Leamstown Park. I guess we know something about that. Or a river aquifer. Yep. Capacity building. I don't know a lot about that one. Nelson Square. I only know a little bit about that. The cultural uh, competency. Um, again, I'm not sure why that's coming back up again when we've already hired a, a council officer to do that. Uh, work. The next one down, I don't know nothing about. Air quality in Picton. Unfortunately, I don't know about Picton issues on that one. No. Yes, the regional park. The Heritage Centre. I was actually just trying to find the minutes on that. I actually thought that was taken from a reserve and I thought that was $100,000, not 120. Don't know anything about the tracks and pathways. Technology one, yes, I was put into a workshop on that one, so I do know a little about, bit about that, but that, that, that has got a lot of question marks on that. Water allocation, not a lot about that. We can go through those projects if you like, and we have workshopped all those projects uh, over the last six months, but I accept that not everyone either was at workshops or uh, you know, maybe uh, is no longer familiar with them, but we can discuss them if you wish. But equally, if you feel that the councillors feel as a whole that this should be packed, or you can pack it. But with the rider, that I think the sound recovery one would be a good one to to get it. 
Yeah, look, I, I'm in your hands how you want to proceed with this. I, I must say, when I went through the list, um, I was aware of all of them, not in a lot of detail, a couple of them. I accept that. Uh, certainly the first part, uh, uh, down to the uh, 2.15 million, uh, there was never any question about those. Uh, but look, I'm in your hands. We'll proceed whichever direction you want to take us. Councillor Taylor. <coughs> This is a difficult one and that I have, you know, sympathy for Councillor Arbuckle's position that we are making a decision at the end of a term. As Mark said, it's bringing it forward. Bring it. Uh, due before us, but I'm also mindful that much of the work on this has happened through either uh, the annual plan process through staff, which is the tranche one work, which we've all seen through annual plan. Uh, so, you know, technically we're, we're all familiar with, or, or some of it, um, through committee, for instance, the air quality monitoring of Picton through environment committee reports or through annual plan requests like the Heritage Centre. I'm also a bit mindful that we've already got an extension as a council, that other councils have put their uh, requests in. Um, and you can remind us of the earlier cutoff date and that we've had this extension because of the weather effect and the weather event here. And so we're already, if you will, um, pushing out our date. So I wouldn't necessarily like to see it pushed out any further. I would prefer, if it's possible, to have Councillor Arbuckle provided with the information he seeks so he has a level of comfort on individual projects. And it may be that an individual project doesn't progress and that's for this group to decide rather than not putting an application in for many of the projects which we have already seen and we already have a level of comfort with. So that's my position as a councillor, that we take the time to get a level of comfort with the projects and try to get our application in, mindful that we've already had an extension to our date. We have had an extension of the original date was the 30th of September and it was due to the flooding issue that we had that extension uh, for, for us to, to uh, respond. But I suppose the point for me, if we let this lie on the table, you're going to ex be expecting a half the council table to make a decision on some very significant projects in a very, very short time, along with all the other induction issues that they're going to be facing, and they are significant. We only go back to our own time when we started on council. There's a lot of learning to do early on, but to get your head around these projects in a very short time, uh, it will be very difficult for them. And if I can just say, I was confident enough to be able to make a decision on these projects today, whichever way I was going to vote, simply because I'm aware of all of them. I've had good knowledge on most of them. I accept Councillor Arbuckle. There's a couple of uh, ones, uh, projects or proposals in here that we haven't had a lot of information on, but they are projects that fit the criteria that's been given to us. And I was happy to trust they were all about investigation work. And I think sooner or later, you've got to commit funding to commit to the investigation so you can then make a decision on the final works. So that was the reason why I was confident that this was a matter we could deal with today. I personally believe that expecting a new council to come in, get an understanding of this, getting an understanding of what the funding, the, the purpose of the funding for a start, and you've really got to get ahead around that. It's not just money that we can pick a project and, and say that's that'll be us. Uh, there are criteria and these proposals fit that criteria and I thought it would be prudent as a council if we made a decision now with the knowledge that we've had and we've built up for me personally over the last 12 years. So Councillor Peters, Councillor Fitzpatrick, Councillor Mark. Yeah, thanks Mr Mayor and, and look that was fair to think around one or two projects that haven't had formal approval for clarification. The answer I thought was enough. Now, the total project list here is 760,000 more than we can get. So some of these are going to have to go. And in the scheme of things, um, through the next period of time, once this is approved, and I, and I also agree it should be approved today, um, in the scheme of things, some of these projects will go on the basis of their merit. 
uh, and ones that haven't had full approval will have that discussion. So I don't see any issue there. If we were already underneath the amount and all these projects became absolutely sacrosanct, then there's no, no uh, room to manoeuvre in that regard. Um, the fact that uh, $760,000 worth have to go anyway gives a fair uh, indication. And if more go than 760, as Martin said earlier, um, then more projects can be applied for by the closing date. So I don't have a problem with any of it as an outgoing councillor. So for Thanks, for me. I just wanted to um, agree with what your comments were. As a new new councillor, first thing we're going to have to get here around is the three waters itself and our stance. So that would be the first month of meetings um, before you actually make any decisions and, and actually go through the workshop. So you wouldn't have any time to do that. So totally agree with your comments. Customer. Take the, the time to reiterate what has been said over here previously. I agree entirely with those things and remind you as chairman, you probably haven't got a second for this recommendation. I haven't moved it yet. <laughs> Yeah, look, I, I am happy to move it. If I could have the second, Councillor Fitzpatrick. And I will open it up and I'm happy to hear from uh, anybody that um, really important issue that we need to get out. Uh, we need to be really clear about what we're trying to achieve today and the reasons for it. And there are very good reasons in my view. So I'm happy to take a right of reply there, Councillor Arbuckle, if you want to speak to it or would you prefer to wait for anybody else? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, incoming councillors uh, will be very much capable of uh, understanding uh, in quick time these projects, uh, as I've outlined to you. Some of them are, I'm not aware of, but I'm sure that the backing papers are there. Um, any competent person with the backing papers would then be able to understand what the project put sources in house. Um, we are would, would be able to say yes or no to that. You may have missed the initial discussion. What I said to you in council is there will be from some councillors that will be elected on Saturday the feeling that this is a step down the road towards us losing our water, our three water infrastructure. There are certain uh, candidates that are campaigning on not seeing that happen. This may, in the eyes of some councillors, be inappropriate to actually take this money. It's the next council that lives with this decision. Therefore, I think we have time for that, that council to make that decision. Yeah, look. Point of order there, Mr Chairman. Um, Mr Mayor, we actually have um, discussed and agreed and resolved to take that tranche money funding. It's already been passed and on the books. Yeah, I was going to make that comment. But look, I, I, I can see where you're coming from. Uh, with all due respect, if you take yourself back to 2010, when you first sat down at this table, do you could you say with confidence that you could get your your head around and your your understanding of this and within that short time frame, along with everything else? You don't need to answer that, of course. I, I presume you'd say yes, <laughs> but uh, with all due respect, I have my doubts. But I'll let you respond to that as well. Oh, look, it's a difficult concept and what I can tell you about Three Waters, we have actively opposed the government's model and I'm happy to sit here today and say that remains our position. We have got legal opinions. We've been part of the Communities for Local Democracy response to this. We've had assurances from the Minister and from DIA that this will not have any, it won't be seen and won't be interpreted, won't be held out as a commitment to the Three Waters models as it currently stands. We've had that assurance. The option, of course, is of turning this money down. That's, I suppose, it's something about cutting off your nose to spite your face. You've got to be really careful. You turn down five and a half million dollars, you're going to have some ratepayers around Melbourne asking the questions as well. So, uh, that's where it sits and I'm confident that we've got to proceed. Look, I've made a few statements there and I'm very happy if you want to respond to them, you're very welcome to. Right, anybody else? Councillor Roddy. Just a quick question, if I did all turn to muck and um, we just have to find the money to uh, 
refund it, wouldn't we? There wouldn't be. I mean, we could just find five million out of forestry reserves or something like that to pay it back. If it what, was. Why would we want to pay it back? Well, if it does turn to as Jamie's saying, if it does, if it does start to compromise you on the three horses, I know you've had advice from Robert, etc., about it um, and others. But if it did, if you were in a situation where you found it was compromising your position on three waters. The worst scenario is that would council would just have to refund that money. I have heard it from effectively from the minister's mouth. If if they took a, a different stance on the, what they've already told us, um, it would be more than a, it would be more than disrespectful. It's been very clearly spelled out to us. This does not. It will not be interpreted as you agree with the three waters reform as it currently sits. Um, Mr. Mayor, do we can, have that in writing? What from me or from somebody else? <laughs> well, I, I they haven't committed it. To, look, there's plenty of recorded conversation around the minister's comments here. This is a conversation that isn't just happening in the the council chambers of Marlborough District Council. It's um, mountain bike opportunity. Everybody is asking the same questions, particularly those opposed to the reform process. So we're not alone. It's not something that we've suddenly come up with. And this discussion has been going on for the last six months. And I've been sending you out all the information from uh, communities for local democracy. And I would hope that you read it. Otherwise, you come in here and you're, you're uninformed. And, and that doesn't do either. So, no, I'm confident. I haven't got a personal letter from the Minister Nanaya Mahuta, and I don't expect to get one. I mean, the times that she said she's going to get back to me, she never has. Simple. Mr Mayor, you're right. There, she has made many public statements that are recorded, and we could, I'm sure we could find one if you really wanted it, but there's, she has said, uh, and she said to local government New Zealand, that um, you, you, you could still oppose three waters and receive this funding. So um, I'm, I'm quite absolutely confident about that. And, and there was a legal opinion gained from, I think it was Local Government New Zealand on that as well. So um, yeah, I think that, that's uh, clear. Councillor Arbuckle, I'm happy to take any comment. Thank you. The minister you refer to, Mr Mayor, is that the same minister that said uh, councils around New Zealand could opt in or opt out of three waters reform? Yeah, but she just never changed, be mandated. She just changed her mind, right? <laughs> no, look, I, I take your point. I mean, this is a different, uh, a different position we're in here. This is about taking the money. As I say, your choice is not to take it. But that would be very hard to explain as time goes on. Look, we've also got the position that uh, with the reform process, it extends beyond the next election. Um, so if there is a change of government, um, uh, the, the, the new government, whether they'd expect to be paid back this money, I don't think they could do that. I mean, this, is, this has been agreed and the criteria around it's been agreed. So uh, to me, it is those pennies from heaven. If we don't take it, I think we'd be, we'd be struggling with our, our communities about why we didn't, particularly with the assurances we've been given. But I agree uh, there was an indication, a very strong indication that we would have an opt-in, opt-out, and that was taken away from us. But I don't think that they could interpret what we're doing here today, along with most other councils. I think there's one, to my knowledge, that is still standing firm. Um, I think all councils have agreed that the, um, the, the, the first tranche, they're all going to grab it. And they've been assured, the same as us, uh, that uh, the government will not backtrack and take it as a sign that you're agreeing to the three waters reform in its current form. Now, somebody else was indicating they want to talk. Councillor Crow. I feel I've been really well informed and there's been that much information out there that I'm ready to make a decision. Um, I feel that if you think about the terminology in this fund, it is better off funding. Um, I know this might sound naive, but if we separate the politics for a moment from what's best for our community with this money that's available and the knowledge that we have, I feel comfortable and ready to make a decision. Well put. Right, I've moved it. It's been seconded. Uh, does anybody else want to speak? I'm happy to take any further comments. You've all spoken. Happy to take it. I want to be clear with everybody where we sit, but I think 
the, the councillors that do have a, an aspiration to be back at the table early next week. I think it's important that you have a view uh, and um, that we know where it sits and because uh, you'll be influential in the next uh, council. Councillor Andrews. Thank you. I just, the way I've been listening, I think we are between a rock and a hard place, but we know the rock. We've been informed at how big the rock is and I think we have to take what we've learned and think if we turn down that money, we will be, the community will miss out in many forms. I just made the comment that it's a sugar-coated pill and it could turn out to be bitter, but if we don't take that chance, people might miss out. So give it our best. Yeah, I know Rock's never been in a hard place in my life. Right, we've got a mover and a seconder. Anyone else, please? Right. All those in favour? Against? Yes. Councillor Arbuckle, do you want your vote recorded? Any abstaining? Why? Well, you're, you're for or against, in my view. Okay. That's so carried. Like how they reserve plan. Right, the next item is to conduct business with public excluded. I'm happy to move. Councillor Fitzpatrick, all those in favour? Carried. 